The periodic table doesn't just arrange elements in order of increasing atomic number, it also shows the trends of certain aspects and characteristics of atoms, aiding us in making assumptions, explanations, and calculations in chemistry. Today we'll be focusing specifically on the periodic trends of the first ionization energies. These trends allow us to calculate the energy required in the formation and dissociation of compounds, and is also an important step in making Hess's law calculations. The general trend of an element's first ionization energy is this. As an element moves from left to right across a period, the first ionization energy increases. As you move from top to bottom in each group, the first ionization energy decreases. This gives us an overall trend where the first ionization energy increases as we go from bottom left to top right. So now let's, so now let's explain some of the key concepts and terms. First of all, what is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the amount of energy that is required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of an atom. As you can see in this diagram here, the ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from this, ener from this carbon atom. In an equation, it will look a little something like this. A neutral atom will decompose and lose an electron producing an electron in its ions as product. As you see in this equation, the lithium atom will ionize to form a lithium ion. The ionization energy is therefore the amount of energy that is required to make the lithium atom into a lithium ion by removing an electron. That's why we see that this process yields a lithium ion and an electron as products. Two of the main factors that influence the value of or strength of elements first ionization energy are its effective nuclear charge and the distance between its nucleus and outermost electrons. The two are closely related in how an increase in effective nuclear charge will lead to a decrease in the distance from its nucleus and its valence electrons. The effective nuclear charge of an atom is the result of the attractive and repulsive forces between the nucleus, the protons in the nucleus and the electrons in the outer shells. As you can see here, it's the attraction between these electrons and the nucleus. The overall attraction between the nucleus and the electron thus gives the atom's nucleus an, an effective nuclear charge, in, indicating this extent of attraction. That's why we have this name. The neutrally charged neutrons in an atom may also act as uh, may also act as a buffer to balance out the charges of the nucleus, and thus may influence the values of an atom's effective nuclear charge as well. But we will not go into detail and consider this as an influence in this section. The distance between an atom's nucleus and its surrounding electrons can be explained by two different factors. One, the number of energy levels in an atom and two, the strength of its effective nuclear charge among atoms within the same number of energy levels. So how exactly do these two factors affect the strength of an element's ioniza first ionization energy trend? First of all, the reason for an increasing trend across the period is because of an increase in the effective nuclear charges as you move from left to right across the period. As you go from left to right across the period, the increasing atomic number explains the increase in the number of electrons and protons. Since the atomic number is equal to the number of electrons and protons, as the number of protons and electrons increases, the amount of attractive forces between the protons in the nucleus and electrons in the energy levels increases. Therefore, increasing the overall re re attraction or pull of the electrons toward the nucleus, making it harder to remove an electron. This can be seen in this carbon atom and lithium atom. Carbon's on the right of lithium, therefore, since there are more protons and electrons, there are more attractive forces, and that's why it's harder to remove an electron in carbon than in lithium. Now, the major reason for a decrease in the first ionization energy as you move from top to bottom, or in other words, the increase as you move up each group is the increase in the atomic radius or the distance between the nucleus and the outermost electron. Although effective nuclear charges do influence the up-down trend to some extent, it is not as significant as the effects of atomic radius.
Because the total number of energy level increases as you move down each group, the distance between the, the nucleus and outermost electrons of an atom increases as well. An increased distance will result in a weaker pull on the valence electrons as the force of attraction is expanded over a greater distance. Therefore, larger distance will make it easier for the atom to lose its electron, and so the ionization energy will be lower, as little energy is needed to remove such a weakly attached electron. Therefore, conversely, as you move up the periodic table within each group, the first ionization energy will increase. As you see in this sodium and lithium atom, since sodium has more energy levels compared to lithium, the pull is weaker because the attract forces of attractions are expanded over greater distance. And this is how we end up with an overall trend of first ionization energies that go uh, of from top uh, bottom left to top right.